Namaste, my beautiful beings of light. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jeanette, and I am a high priestess. I am to, I am connected to everything that is. I am a psychic. I am intuitive. I am an ancient, 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 ancient BCE old soul who has reincarnated on the planet at this time to help humanity awaken. Balance out, balance out the planet. I am here on a mission and nobody's gonna stop my mission. Nobody will come into my journey and think that they're gonna stop it because it's not. I'm very highly protected and I come with nothing but pure peace, pure love, and pure intentions. I am also connected to my alien ancestors, my alien family. Many may not believe, but that's okay. Everybody will awaken and everybody, people will awaken to who they truly are. I do not impose anything on anyone. I am not here to change minds for, on anybody. Everybody is free to receive messages that resonate and if it doesn't, you just let it go. Let it go. Open. People, I am open to receiving guidance from my ancestors, guidance from my father guidance from my archangels guidance from my galactic family to read materials open up my dna activate them to truly understand who i truly am i felt the need to say that i want to bring my father in to protect me as I deliver this message to the collective. I call in my archangels, my ascended masters, my galactic family. I call in my deities, my fairies, my dragons. I call in my spirit animals. I call in my passed on loved ones. I ask that the collective who really are here to receive the messages. May God protect them from any entities who are trying to attack. I ask that any and all evil eye that is sent to be sent back. I do not accept anything that is not for my highest good or the highest good of the collective who's here to really receive the message. So I am guided to read something from a book, which I was guided by spirit, by my father, my ancestors to, to get and read and understand. As far as the name of the book, I'm not um, disclosing that as of yet, but it's the his it has to do with the history of Yoruba. Students of aspirants of any religion systems are guided by knowledge, by the knowledge and insight of the teachers of the systems. They're educated in the geographical, historical, and political dynamics that have influenced the beginnings and the expansions of their specific religion and those that have played a role in its development. The same holds true for the Yoruba aspirants, especially New World descendants. Although aspirants seek religion heritage as well as ancestral origins, many know little or nothing of the history of the Yoruba land in Nigeria, West Africa. I provided several key points for the purpose of study and con contemplation. As an introduction, 
Let it be stated that the origins of the people and the culture known as the Yorubas are wrapped in antiquity. So that to exactly say, so that, uh, sorry, in antiquity, so that to exactly say where and when it all began is impossible. More research on the topic is needed and the applications of knowledge in forms of religion, mass media, social media, literature, education, and well development is viewed as a determined necessity. The Yoruba history we know begins with the migration of an East African population across the Trans-African route leading from the Mid-Nile River area to the Mid-Niger. -Nig Basil Davison writes, migrating people undoubtedly used this route from times that were extremely remote. That 2,000 years ago and more, the climate and vegetation will have treated trans-African travelers in a gentler way than they do now. They would say, Davison continues, they came this way the root from the earliest of times and their beliefs and their interventions came with them. Archaeologists, according to M. Moelia, O-M-O-L-E-Y, inform us the Nigerian region was inhabited more than 40,000 years ago as far back as 65 BCE. The civilization has been deemed in part of Nok culture. The Nok culture was visited by the Yoruba group between uh, let me use it. between 2000 BCE and 500 BCE. The group was led according to the Yoruba historical account of King Adu, uh, Duduwa, <laughs> sorry, who settled somewhat peacefully in the already established Le Efe, the sacred city of the indigenous people. The time period was the Bronze Age, indicating the civilization of both groups was a was at a high level. Sheikh Anta Diop proclaims the Yoruba during antiquity lived in ancient Egypt before migrating to the Atlantic coast. He used he uses a demonstration the similarity of identity of language, religious belief, customs, and names of persons, places, and things. The key point of the key point or focus in the respect of the Yoruba religion evolution induced the more defined statement of what makes Yoruba. In the history of West Africa, AD 1000 to 1800, Anwubiku states, according to tradition, Aduduwa, the chief ancestor, and the king of the Yoruba settled in Ejefi. From this point, his descendants became the kings and queens of Yoruba cities and territories. The greatest of Aduduwa descendants was Oren Mayan who became the Alphan or the rulers of the Oyo states. That's O-Y-O. -O. Somewhere around 14 BCE, Arden Mayan's army marched across the southern Sudan and penetrated deep into the great tropical forest, conquering and layering the foundations of the Yoruba Empire. Centuries of spectacular glory and achievement followed by the reign of Oren Mayan. 
It is during this era that Yoruba people reestablished LEFE as a spiritual capital and Oyo as the governmental seat. And enslavement of West African over an overview. This is an overview of enslavement in West Africans. Anu, okay, Anwubiko research indicates that the wars of expansion impacting the Yorubas during the 16th and 17th centuries were not fought to produce slaves or exports to the coast, but for local service on Yoruba farms. It was not until the 18th century that wars to provide slaves for sale to Europeans became important. Enslavement from European hands began in the 15th and 16th century. Around 1530, the Portuguese began to transport Africans from the west coast to Spanish mines and plantations in the New World. Later, other European nations became involved. France, England, Holland, and Spain soon became active in the brutal manipulation and deception that was somehow became known as the slave trade. This era began in 1488 when Bart Tolomu Diaz sailed from Portugal and around the Cape of Good Hope in 1498. Vasco da Gama explored the coastal regions of Africa, opening the gates of European explorations and takeover. Both Diaz and da Gama were seeking a route to the East Indies and both were taking Africans to Europe in bondage. When the New World was invaded in 1942, 1492, so sorry, what did I say, 14, 1492, Africans were, after the European failed to fully enslave the Native Americans and forced into shackled bondage and shipped in labor in what was to become the New World. The United States, South America, Central America and the Caribbean. It was noted to be, it must be noted that the Africans were also enslaved in Europe during this era. Ismailic Hiru's, he, he, I don't know how to say that, jihad also swept through Africa, clear to the west coastal regions. This era lasted from 17th century through the 19th century. The Trans-Saharan trans slave trade flourished. The Yoruba nation was disseminated and depleted of its natural resources and eventually collapsed as a result of this dual attack on its land, Arabs and Europeans. Arabs and Europeans basically enslaved Africans on the East Coast and Central regions. The greater emphasis was on the trade of elephant tusk and other exotic merchandise. The laborers needed to transport the goods where the captives of wars and raids. The laborers needed to transport the goods where captives of wars and raids. It is important to note that the largest numbers of African enslaved for the new world labor came from the Yoruba. It's also important to note that the most that the most of those enslaved were war prisoners taken from elite classes of soldiers and warrior priests. Hence the new world became in undated with people knowledgeable of their culture and were initiated members of this higher teaching. It is no small wonder that the Yoruba culture became the dominant theme of African trends of America, no matter the hardship and suffering imposed. This isn't to say that the century of other African nations were not important, but Bini the Ibo, and the Congolese 
The people of Ghana, Ghana and Seagal and others play a vital role in the blending of Africa into the fabric of the new world and the old world as well. African descendants were transported from new world countries like Cuba, Puerto Rico, Trinidad, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, and other islands of the West Indies to Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, Venezuela, and other countries of South America, and finally the colonies and emerging states of North America. As a note, prior to and during this era, Africans were transported as slaves, humans to England, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and other European countries. The crossing of the Atlantic Ocean to reach the New World has been termed the Middle Passage, the Triangle Trade, and MAFA. This has been estimated that after 75 million captives were taken during the 14th through the 18th century. This doesn't include the higher number enslaved by Arabic, Ara Arabs or the numbers taken to Europe. The enslavement of Africans remained the greatest atrocity of human history and a crime against humanity. African people were solidly encased in the religion of their own culture and the zeal to implant it. It also existed, especially for the Yoruba. Maureen Warner Lewis, in her book, Guinea's Other Sons quotes a study of Ma Mambo Ganji and Omar Cooper, 1971 through 1977. The fact that the Yorubas were dragged into enslaved trade in such a huge number and so on before the trade was brought to end had several important consequences. The culture and religion tended to dominate the subculture of the slave society and to submerge the and absorb into itself surviving elements of African culture. There also came into being a type of homogenization, sorry, homogenization, homogenization or synthesis, synthesis sorry. Synthesis, synth sorry, I'm just going to move on. Synthesis of the African religions and Christianity. From the African perspective, those arose a special Christian interpretation and practice. Warner Lewis continues, some Africans denounced the tradition gods. Others did not even credit their existence. On the other hand, a large number maintained tradition, beliefs, and practices along the Christianity, using one spiritual resource to supplement and complement the other. For people stripped of fundamental social structures and more and morris, the concept of spiritual and religion have miraculously survived. African, however, maintained the African within the imposed and un enforced Christianity. Evident is the creation of Negro. Field, holler, spiritual, getting the Holy Ghost, a form of possession, possession, shouting, speaking in tongues, intense preaching, music, praise, dancing, and so forth. The African soul was extinguished during enslavement, but simply transfigured to meet the Euro social pressures of shadow slavery, racial prejudice, and near genocidal practices and directives. Robert Ferris Thompson writes the introduction of Flash of the Spirit that the Yoruba are Black African large populations and are creators of one of the premier cultures. <coughs> they don't want this out. <coughs> cultures of the world. The Yoruba believed themselves descendants of goddesses and gods from an ancient spiritual capital, Eli Efi. That's double L or double, double E, double I, I'm sorry, double I, E, and then it has a hyphen, 
IFE. They follow this special concern for the properties of the right living through their worship of major goddesses and gods, each essentially a unique manifestation of As Ashe. Only the most widely and important deity survived the this. I don't know how to say this word, V-I-C-I-S-S-S, -S -S, vicissitudes of the Atlantic trade. The important deities bear the name of Orises, Orishas, Orishas, which are the de deities of the Yoruba people. The Orishas are, com are compromised of Isu, Elegwa, Obat, Dala, Oshun, Ogun, Yomoha, Shango, Oya, and numerous others. Each requires special worship, songs, and sacrifice. The ability to keep these deities alive in the world, the reality of the Yoruba led to the conscience masking from behind Catholic saints and related social rit ritual rituals performances. This process is known as syn syncretism. Catholic, oh my God, why am I not speaking right? Catholic, Catholicism, Catholicism, <laughs> with its numerous patrons, saints made the masking possible. And since the Portuguese and Spanish were Catholic and are, and also major enslavers of the Yoruba, elites, prisoners. The tradition survived virtually intact, at least at one core. Among the Euro-speaking colonies, religion set were formed Santeria in Puerto Rico, Condomble in Brazil, Sango, Pastis in Trinidad, Bundun in Haiti, and Lukami Santeria in Cuba. Their European influence, although great, could not deter the African descendants from secretly maintaining their tradition. Even the language of the Yoruba remained somewhat intact as it did cultural manner mannerisms. Each English Protestant were also involved in the enslaved trade and they had greater success in domesticating the enslaved Africans, hence lessening African culture power as evident when comparing the United States to Cuba or Brazil, which are Catholic based. Lack of numerous patron saints in the religion construct made it difficult to match the Yoruba religion. Lack of tropical environments in North America also made it difficult for the Africans to maintain cultural, geographic, Relative, re, relativity. Finally, the North American United States emphasis on breeding African slaves and later the internal slave trade brought an end to fresh ideas and religious favors brought and incited by newly arrived captives. Yet remnants of the Yoruba tra tradition emerged and flourished as high John the Conqueror, Root, Voodoo, etc. Today, many of the African descendants are openly embracing the Yoruba faith and practice because of the because of political struggles, especially in the 1950s. New World people from the Caribbean found their way to the United States. They are mainly from Cuba, sometimes called Little Africa. The Cubans brought them the Yoruba religions and practices as they interpret it now. Now African descendants of the United States and Brazil are stepping beyond the synchronisms and its Christian impact and influence and religious interpretations. They're returning to now unadulterated form of life and ancestral religion known as the Yoruba or Ifa. Serious aspirants of this religion's spiritual movement have connected themselves to Nigerian priests and priestesses who now reside in the United States. A few like myself have traveled to Nigeria for initiations and insights from the source of at least 
closer to it. The key point realized is the history, no matter how tragic, provides at its end the dominations of a people and culture throughout the globe. Wars, enslavements, forced, and my forced immigrations, famines, etc. have led to the displacement of millions upon millions of human beings. But we too often see the physical traumas of such shatters, but not the cultural impact made on the world. If history continues to repeat itself, which it mostly likely will, then it will continue to see the braiding of humanity into a oneness, even if the braiding is painful and forced. On the other hand of this nightmare is the realization that, decim decim that decimations occur via peaceful means as well. Books and other forms of literature and studies also spread the thoughts and philosophies and religions of numerous cultures. Art and music add to the hum human adds to the humanities that open us to the power of being human. And now with the advent of internet and social media, the world is but a fingertip or voice command away. Study of the Yoruba religion is no longer held in secret by the enslaved or wrapped by shifting notions of magic and demonic practices. The potency of its core is available not only the survivors of its history, but also to the entire world. I say this to say this, that we have been enslaved. Our ancestors are coming through and saying we need to open, be open, and not let other people's thoughts, people's beliefs, whatever you believe in is your belief in. Whatever you, as long as you're doing it with pure intentions, with a pure heart, with a clean soul, and God is the most highest power, We don't need to be enslaved anymore. We could free ourselves. We are free to create a world of peace. <sighs> For those who use the culture, the 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 spiritual, the hoodoo, the voodoo in because there's also there's good and bad. There's good and bad in every everything. This is a this is a world where polarity is always mirrored back. Are we gonna do the good? Are we gonna do the bad? It goes with voodoo and hoodoo. Are you gonna do it for good or are you gonna do it for bad? People do it. And it's true. And it has been done to enslave humanity. What's the ancestors? I want to pick a card from the ancestors. Okay, who's coming through? Oh, and we get Oshun. Oh my God, thank you. Oshun is here. She is the goddess. She's fearless. She's abundance. She is creation. Oh, thank you, Oshun. Wow. I almost want to cry. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm so happy she came through. Twenty-five. Goddess of fearless love. Yoruba. Just what I Yoruba. I was just I just did a reading. And spirit is talking. Yoruba, Nigerian, temple of lovers. She's the element of the waters. Goddess is goddess Oshun is exalted Eurisha, a deity of honey, sweet waters, love, sensuality, fertility, and beauty. But the Yoruba's lady of God's anger and jealousy can also flood and destroy. 
that is the polarity. Guidance, Oshun's guidance, dare to love. Begin with loving yourself. Allow yourself to be loved. You feel everything deeply. You are poor, 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 poor. I don't know how to say this word. P-O-R-R. P-O-R-O-U-S. With a wall around your heart. This is a paradox. Embodiment. You are love. And you are worth loving. Your divine assignment is to remain open to fearless love. You deserve to be loved in your language. You are worthy of a love that remembers your beauty at your ugliest moments. Don't allow, don't allow your unhealed past to block your future. Real love is sacred contract that says, I am vulnerable and committed. Your heart is safe. Your heart is safe with me. Let's expand our consciousness together. I give love and receive love. I am love. That's Oshun. She came through. Oh my God. This is a beautiful, beautiful reading. And I'm going to just pour one more from, from this deck. And then I'm going to close it out. Oh. Okay. Abol. I don't know how to say Abolimba. 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 She is harvest. She is harvest. Number 437777. So Oshun was 23, 25, and Abolimba is 43. That's 7. Wow. Spirit is talking. 47. She's a high priestess, the goddess of harvest, Banga, Guiana. Element, again, water. Abol is a Baga, fertility goddess, and Nimba is her living spiritual healing mask. Together, they embody the sacred feminine and abundance. Again, feminine abundance, fertility. Give thanks. You are being blessed. It is harvest time. Pay attention. A season of great harvest is a season of great epitomies. You are prospering. Harvest is when you reap the blessings that you have sown. The harvest is not just the fulfillment of your dreams, but the creation of them. Your thoughts, your imaginations, and blessings of you being here another day on this earth that is all harvest. What seeds of generosity, love, support, and goodwill can you sow in your community to create a bountiful harvest for all? The declaration, Goddess Declaration, we always, we are always prospering. Always keep it positive. Always keep it loving. Always, whatever seed that you plant, make sure that you plant seeds of, of love. You will get those seeds of abundance. You, be, you will always be fertile. Your job will be always be fertile. Your love life will always fertilize. Everything in your life will be balanced. We have to learn how to balance both uh, the masculine and feminine energies. And the Yoruba are here to say just that. And I just read their, their story, a little bit, piece of it. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to my creator and to all those who, my spirit guides and my ancestors for letting, giving me the wisdom and the guidance to always be open and receiving the knowledge and not close myself out to anything in this world that is not impossible. Anything in this life is possible. You just got to believe. Believe with your cold hearted that you will free yourself. That's what it is all about, freeing yourself. 
releasing yourself from these bondages that are no longer serving you. Whew. I love you all. Have a blessed day. Namaste. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe my, my contacts. And um, later on, I will post the name of the book. But for now, I'll just keep it because people do copy my contacts. And I am trying to protect myself from... And I just want to speak to those systems who are enslaving our human beings, our, our people. You need to release them. You need to let go of them. God is not having it no more. You can no longer enslave humanity. And those who want to be free, you are able to free yourself. You just got to believe and go within and stop listening to the outside sources. Go within and ask your father. Who am I? What is my purpose? And he will guide you to it. Namaste.